Well, that's been several days now. I can't stay inside this place forever, otherwise it'll just become my tomb. Benson, can you give me a quick readout on the radiation levels outside, and will I be able to survive if I go out to work on this base any further? Commander, I am still detecting radiation levels outside that varied between 5.4 to 6.3 sieverts. The protective lining in your spacesuit will offer you some protection, but I still estimate that you will receive radiation in the region of approximately 200 to 300 rads. I therefore recommend that if you do plan on going outside, that you do so for no longer than 30 minutes at the most. Otherwise you will start to suffer the effects of ARS. Acknowledged. Thanks, Ben. I'm heading outside right now to take a look around and try to figure out a way how to get us out of this mess. Moving this base block by block just isn't going to work. It'll take too damn long. I need to think of something else. Now, here's the thing. Do I have enough components to create a small ship that's capable of carrying this base? I don't think I do. Yeah, Benson's right. This radiation is way too high. I better not stay out here any longer than absolutely necessary. Now, when I originally built this temporary base, I added six supports, three on either side because of the seismic disturbances. If I get rid of those, maybe I can stick atmospheric thrusters on them instead and move the base using that. No, on second thoughts, I don't think I have the components or the energy for that. Maybe I could use wheels instead. Now there's an idea. Let's see how they look when I attach them to the side. I'll try the 3x3 three three version, see how they look. 6x6, six six, eh, it's probably going to be just a little bit too big. I'll grind away the first support strut first though, just to make some space. And I'd better add some blocks underneath, just so the wheels sit lower than the hull itself. Now, I've got a feeling this is upside down. I'll try rotating it. There we go. I think that's the right way around. Wheel could not be placed. Now, I reckon that's probably because the ground's in the way. I'll try digging a hole around it and placing it later on. Right now, however, I'm just going to focus on getting the components I need to get this welded up as quickly as possible. Right, that's the suspension blocks more or less complete. All I need to do now is get the rest of the components to finish off those wheels. So far, everything's looking good. I did have to dig out some extra space on the left hand side to fit those wheels in, but that could prove useful in future as once I remove the last support strut, that hole should stop the base from rolling away. I will have to be careful though because I've already been working out here on all this for the last 16 minutes, which means I've only got another 5 to 10 to get all this done, or I run the risk of suffering from acute radiation syndrome, which is something I'm hoping to avoid if at all possible. And since I'm planning on leaving this area for good, what I will do before I leave is salvage all the components from this old hydrogen tank over here. I'll just very quickly check to make sure I've not left any hydrogen bottles inside. Nope. Cool. Let's start grinding it down. And what I'll do is I'll use those components I've just salvaged to start building those wheels. Right. 
Right, I've been working out here for 22 minutes now, but the good news is that's all but two of those wheels complete. And once those two are done, we should be ready to roll. Actually, that reminds me. Benson, just to confirm, and alleviate any fears I may have, once I remove the support struts, those six wheels will safely be able to support the weight of the mobile base, correct? That is correct, Commander. According to my calculations, even though the gravity is slightly higher than Earth's, the wheels and suspension system should be more than adequate to support the weight of the mobile base it is attached to, even when going over uneven ground. Excellent. Thanks, Ben. I did suspect that that would be the case, but it doesn't hurt to double check, just to be sure. Well, not that I could have done anything about it, of course, because there is no more space to add any more wheels to this damn thing. There's been no further sign of that creature we heard earlier, so I'm hoping that whatever it is has just lost interest and gone elsewhere. I mean, it certainly hasn't come anywhere near this base, because if it had done so, the automated defences would have picked it up and started shooting at it. And they haven't. So that's a good sign. Once again, I'm limited by whatever I can carry in my backpack. You know, it's times like these when I really do miss the construction ship I used to have. But that's okay. What I'll do once I'm more established on this planet later on is I'll build another construction ship that uses atmospheric engines instead. Now that'll be cool. All these components I'm salvaging here are going to be really useful to me later on, so I just need to make sure I don't leave any behind. I wish I could get closer to the wreck of the Prestinium and salvage what's left over there, but unfortunately the radiation levels are too high. It really would be a suicide mission. Looks like all the wheels are pretty much complete now. All I need to do is just grind down the rest of that hydrogen tank, get back inside, and then calibrate the wheels in suspension, and hopefully we can get underway. Oh, I've run out of space. Well, that's okay, I'll come back for those in a second. <laughs> Might as well take the scrap metal as well. Okay, that should be everything. Time to get back inside. Okay, let's get this place sealed up and repressurized. That's not bad. That's 26 minutes and 14 seconds of being out there. But I'm not finished yet. I still need to convert my living quarters into something resembling a working cockpit. That's the windows at the front all done. All I need to do now is go into the cockpit area and remove the passenger seat and replace it with a flight seat so that I can actually drive this mobile base. Now this might be just a little bit too far back. I'll move it one block forward and see what it looks like. Yep, that actually looks okay. I'll just check to see how it looks in relation to the rest of the ship, though. Yeah, that's fine. And the way these windows are set up gives me a pretty good field of view as well. I'll just add the camera views to the toolbar here for both the forward and rear view cameras. I don't think I need to do anything with these wheels here, but then again, I've never made a vehicle with wheels before, so this is unfamiliar territory for me. 
But what I will do is add the option to toggle the weapon systems off and on. And also, I'll do the same for the reactor. I think I'll leave the lights and the batteries alone for the moment. That'll just make things complicated. All that's left now is to configure the settings for the wheels and the suspension. And to be honest, I don't have a clue what the hell I'm doing, so this could be very interesting. Now, I'm not exactly sure what all these settings mean, but what I do know is that I don't want a mobile base of this size going particularly fast, so I'll try adjusting the safety lock settings and also the speed limiter as well, just to make sure that there is a maximum speed that it should technically not be able to exceed. I think around 40 kilometers per hour should be enough. Okay, I guess it's now the moment of truth. Let's get out there and remove the support struts and see if I can actually drive this thing. Now, if all goes according to plan, once I remove that last support strut, the vehicle should come down to rest inside that ditch, and it's just a case of getting back inside and driving away. There we go. Oh, hang on. Oh, shit! Benson, quickly, activate the mobile base's handbrake! Sorry, Commander. I am unable to comply. I have not been uploaded onto the mobile base's computer mainframe. Oh, damn it. Well, that was a bit of an oversight, wasn't it? Goodbye, mobile base. It will stop eventually, I suppose. You know, I didn't even think it was that much of a slope. Well, that stopped it. I guess it's time to go and survey the damage now. No damage. Well, that was exceptionally lucky. How about the rest of the wheels, though? It looks like I've been incredibly lucky this time. Just as well I didn't decide to build this thing next to the edge of a cliff, otherwise it would be a completely different story. Right, let's get back inside. Well, I guess I can safely say the wheels work as they were intended. In fact, just a little bit too well. I'll try and see if I can adjust the settings to make the suspension just a little bit higher, and also increase the traction on those wheels. That thing rolled for way too far. Right, I have just finished recalibrating the settings for the wheels and the suspension, and after much trial and error, I can see now that I'm relatively happy with them. So I've set the GPS coordinates back to the old escape pod, and what I'll do now is I'll slowly and carefully drive over to it, and I'll start salvaging the components from that. That's the handbrake off, so here we go. Slowly but surely.
This thing does tend to handle pretty sluggishly, but given the size and weight, that doesn't surprise me. I will need to be careful whenever I go up or downhill though, because this thing just does not like steep inclines. I've also taken the time to add a very basic spotlight onto the front, just to help me see where I'm going when it's dark. And the best thing is, now that this base is completely mobile, I can put as much distance between us and the irradiated wreck of the Prestinium as I possibly can. I'm hoping that the fallout from the Prestinium's reactor going critical is just contained to the area around the wreck itself, so once I get to the escape pod what I'll probably do is I'll take some more readings from the Geiger counter there just to make sure that it is actually safe. I am approaching the location of the escape pod now, so what I'll probably do is stop the mobile base just above it, so there's less distance for me to travel back and forth as I salvage the components from it. The only difference being that this time I will be making sure I put the handbrake on. Making sure that I give the escape pod plenty of space as I pass by, just to make sure it doesn't get run over by these great big wheels. The last thing I want is to have come all this way just to crush the stuff I wanted to salvage. About here looks right. I'll just put the handbrake on, and I'll let the thing settle before I get out. Still waiting for it to settle. You know, I'm beginning to think I could have done with a stronger handbrake. Time to grind down the escape pod, starting with the valuable components, such as those thrusters. They might be useful for later on if I ever decide to build another spacecraft again, once I get back into space that is, or alternatively I could always just recycle them into the resources I need for something else. I'll have to get around to making myself some stairs using those metal frames, but for now I'll just use my jetpack. Maybe later on once I've got some more resources, I might even make myself a makeshift elevator there. But once again, that's a project for later on. Okay, I'm almost done recycling the escape pod. Just a few more runs and hopefully I'll be finished. At least I've made some makeshift stairs now, so that'll save me having to use my jetpack all the time. That's the only downside about being on a planet with high gravity in an atmosphere. Your jetpack uses more fuel. Almost done. One more trip, I reckon, and that should be it. There we are. We finally reclaimed everything from the escape pod. And whilst I'm here, I might as well check on the radiation levels. Oh yeah, the levels are a lot lower over here. I mean, this is similar to the background levels of radiation that you get on Earth. Ben, can you just confirm what the radiation levels are for me, please? Acknowledged, Commander. According to these readings, the radiation levels outside the mobile base are approximately 0 0.96 to 0 0.99 millisieverts, which is well within safe levels. Excellent. That's great news. Thanks, Ben. Well, I guess I don't have to worry about dying from radiation sickness. Although saying that, I have been exposed to slightly elevated levels, so I might still get a little bit ill later on, but I'm hoping it won't be too bad. You know, I'm impressed of how well this mobile base has turned out. I mean, it's not pretty by any stretch of the imagination, it's more functional, but considering it's made from the wreckage of the Prestinium, yeah, I think it turned out pretty well. At the very least, it means I can now explore the rest of this planet's surface. 
Speaking of exploring, my next priority will be to try and see if I can secure some resources somewhere. I need iron, silicon, gold, and a whole lot of things to try and see if I can either make this mobile base larger and more functional, or maybe even find somewhere to build a larger, more permanent base. My ultimate goal, after I've done all that, is to eventually build a spaceship that can get me off this planet and hopefully take me back to Earth. Actually, hold on. Benson, analyzing those sounds, can you give me a rough idea as to where they're coming from? Affirmative, Commander. Based on the surrounding geography and atmospheric density, I have identified the approximate source of the nearest of the unknown sounds. Would you like me to add it as a waypoint on your suits on board personal computer? Affirmative, Ben. Please do. It might be worth investigating to find out what they are, especially now we're mobile. There it is. Anomaly 001. Estimated source of the closest of the unknown sounds. Perfect. Good work, Ben. And it's only 17 kilometers away, so hopefully it won't take us too long to get there. Excellent. Well, I guess it's time for us to finally head out and get to the bottom of whatever the hell it is that's causing those weird noises out there. I'm actually both curious and a little apprehensive because I have absolutely no idea what to expect out there. In a way, I'm kind of glad I brought those defense turrets online, because there's no guarantees that whatever we do find out there is going to be friendly. Here we go. Time for us to drive off into the unknown.